So I wanted to make a video about this issue, as you can read from the title, this video is going to be about custom validation checks for framework forms. So as we know, the native framework forms are still incomplete, there is still a lot to do, a lot of features to add. So let's jump straight into the issue. Uh, one of my clients uh, recently reached out to me and he told me he's getting unconventional information through the email and phone number fields uh, and he is right in Framer right now, nothing is upholding the correct formats. For example, right now this field, the phone number field is not required but the email field is required. So let's for example type this and with the phone number field, practically we can type letters, which is not conventional for a phone number, even though this is tagged with the HTML tag of a phone number. When I press submit, you can see I'm not getting any errors. And usually if I had an email connected to this button, it will go through and display the success state of the button. And this is not good. And this is how Framer Forms operates natively. And same goes with the emails. So let's test this. Uh, let's do test at test dot test dot test which obviously shouldn't be valid it's not an acceptable tdl or not an acceptable domain and we can see we're not getting an error message even though we should we have multiple dots we don't have any realistic character limit as you can see it's not displaying any error and there are a lot of ways to break this even further so we need a code override that can check the validity of the expression of both the email and the phone number. Each of them has a different regular expression that he should hold up to. So before we start, you're going to need the code override I prepared for this and you can find it in the description below. So the first thing we need to do is to set the input and input name fields correctly. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. First of all, the email field obviously should be an email type and the phone number should be a phone number type. But there is another variable to this, which is the name right under the type here. We're going to apply the expression to the main form and not the individual fields. And what the code override will do is look for the children by their names. And when I mean names, I mean their IDs. So for example, if we go to the input field on the email, we can see it has a type email and then it has an ID, which uh, right here is displays as the name. It's going to look for those fields by their IDs, which means we need to control this. So let's start by creating a code override. We select new override and give it the title with form validation, which is important to have the exact same name because the code is going to reference uh, this as a function with form validation. Pull the code from the description and paste it here. OK, so I will explain the code very briefly so you can understand it and customize it to your needs. So let's begin with the inputs. The code is looking for both the phone input and the email input and it's looking for them by name, which is the input name we can see on the right side in Framer. So right now the code is set to look for phone number and email address, which we should update our fields accordingly to match. The next thing you can see in the code here is the phone's regular expression, which controls the format and decides which expression is allowed and which is not. For the phone number, we have two separate error messages. One is for when characters are used in the field, which is invalid because it should be numbers only. And the second one corresponds to the enforcement of the prefix or the length of the number itself. Now, when it comes to the email regular expression, per standard, we're going to check for a string before the at sign, after the at sign, and we're going to limit the expression not to have more than one at sign or more than two whole stops. Why two? Because some TLDs are comprised of two whole stops and not just one, like .com or .net. For example, we have some countries who use uh, .co, .il, so we need to allow those expressions too. The most important thing to highlight here is that we are forcibly blocking any TLD which is not known, it's going to accept only known TLDs like .com, net, org, gov, education, uh, and I also added some of the country codes, uh, which for example .uk, .de, .jp for Japan, .fr for France, etc. So it's important to note here that if uh, you're creating a website specifically for France and you know you're going to have France visitors and they're going to use the .fr TLD, 
then you should add this it's uh, in this example it's already here but you should add your uh, ending which for example uh, will be dot uh, uss for example okay but we don't need it right now so we're going to delete it but this is uh, where you set it and where you allow more expressions of tlds the last thing we need to mention are the error messages themselves you can see them in purple here either the numbers only message and for any other format error it's going to display this text which you can change for the email we have only one error message which says invalid email format ensure it follows the user at domain.tld format with a recognized tld which is going to be one of those and that's it let's go back to the canvas select the form container itself scroll down add a code override you can see with file validation and the override with file validation next we're gonna have to match the name ids as they are written in the code for our email we set it to email address and for the phone number phone number and we can double check as you can see it's looking for phone number you can copy paste it from here and the email address just to make sure so that's it the code override should be working now let's try to run a few tests let's uh, try fake at fake.tld press submit and we get invalid email format ensure it follows the user at domain.tld usually framer would accept this expression so we know it works let's move to the phone number we're going to give it a valid email expression and for the phone number, let's try typing just zero and we get this invalid format message. Let's try giving it a valid expression, for example, plus one and then two to nine. And as you can see, this expression is good, it does not display any error message. But for example, if we add a few zeros to pass the 10 digit limit and we press submit, we get this error again. And that's it. That's how you add custom validation checks for framework forms. You don't have to like or comment on this video, just if you can send it to one of the framer devs, send it to anyone on their team so we can maybe capture their attention and hopefully get this issue fixed and updated natively into framer.